first you have to understand the socio-political context before you can get to the fish preg. Yes, I may be a fish, but I ain't no floozy. What's up guys, it's Kicker. I'm back with my beautiful, gorgeous, intelligent girlfriend, Stitch. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> And she's gonna tell us about the fish fucker book. I have been loving learning about the story through osmosis because I can't read. <laughs> because if you squint, it's a little beef leafy. I agree. Yeah. I think if you like the general beef leaf dynamic and wish it had a fluffy transmigration AU, this would be it. Hell yeah. So let's dive into the Disabled Tyrant's Beloved Pet Fish, Volume 2, who is also his boyfriend, but it's actually not that weird. I'm very surprised by how wholesome this has been all the way through so far. It's kind of refreshing for Adonme. <laughs> Like, if something was going to be weird, you'd think it'd be the fish fucking book, but no, it really isn't. So, where we last left off in volume one, Liu, the fish, is in human form currently, and he's meeting with Prince Jing in the palace to warn him of some plot intrigue things happening. And he is kind of in a pickle. You know, in previous times, Prince Jing has caught sight of his human form, and there's been chasing hijinks around the palace and Prince Jing eventually figured out that that handsome twink was in fact his fish and has been secretly watching over him but not revealing his secret to him. And so Prince Jing is standing there well aware of what's going on. He is laboring under the assumption that his fish is actually a carp spirit that is like a very young carp spirit that is trying to cultivate but isn't very strong. Oh, okay. Which involves, he thinks, you know, sucking essence from humans such as himself. And so he's he's down. He's down to help, down to do anything it takes. <laughs> but Liu is laboring under the delusion that his secret is still safe and that Prince Jing has no idea that he is leading a double life as his fish and a person. Right. Right. So they are together in a room in the palace and... Liu is trying to convince Prince Jing to trust him, but also not ask him too many questions about right. how he knows what he knows and to, you know, close his eyes while he disappears <laughs> sort of situation. <laughs> and he is amazed to discover Prince Jing's complete lack of curiosity, apparently, about him and his conveniently perfect solutions to all of his worries and problems. Interesting. Yes. So he's like talking to Prince Jing, he's like, oh my god, this guy is like so dumb almost. Like, like and yeah, he seems to have all the answers to my problems. And Prince Jing's just like, I'm gonna let you do your thing. While also enabling you to do your thing. So Liu essentially tells him that concubine Cho, who burned herself and made it look like an accident, and she's trying to beg forgiveness for her son through getting the Emperor's sympathy and all of that jazz. Li Yu, of course, having read the novel originally, is like, she is a liar, and you will be able to tell because her wound smells like cypress, oh. which is a very pungent tree that does not grow anywhere near her palace, but she used the burning branch to hurt her arm. Whenever I fake a wound, I too use cypress. Yeah, so... There's lots of cypress here, big. though. Really? So, oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, well, you have to show me next time so I can actually... Look like, outside. Imagine. <laughs> I don't know. You think I know trees? <laughs> Those are cypress trees out really? there. Yes. Science. We could we could go burn not a tree, a branch. No. We will be starting a forest fire. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what it smells like. Okay. But anyways, so he tells Prince Jing, if you find some sort of way to expose her or, like through this, the emperor will know that she's lying and won't excuse the pr like the prince, right? The second prince who is in trouble. So, Prince Jing is like, "Okay, and he's like, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> and Prince Jing also, in exchange for his help, offers him a place in his manor. He's like, you can come stay at my place, fellow human. You know, and they're communicating through writing, by the way. <laughs> and you can come stay in my bed. I mean, place. <laughs> they already have slept in my bed, actually. I know who you are, fish man. <laughs> Basically. And Liu is like, that would be great, but there's this problem of me being human for only two hours a day, so I'd have to, like, come and go, and I couldn't really hold down, like, any sort of, like, 
servant position because I wouldn't really have time. This is kind of like the plot of She's the Man. Oh my god, you're right! She's the fish. <laughs> He's the fish. That's so funny. Literally! This is... It, it has the exact, like, double life rom-com vibes. It really does. And so he's like, I'd love to. I just can't for these reasons. And Prince Jing is like, no problem. Won't ask any questions. All you have to do is take care of my fish while I'm gone. Which is sometimes. And he's like, oh, I'll take care of the fish. And he's, a pr- and he's like, no way. That would like solve all my problems. Because oh you God. won't be around. I'm the fish. This is perfect. Prince Ching is such a good guy. He is. He is actively trying to protect Liu, both, like, in his own home, like, in the palace, like, just at all times. And because, like, again, as a, like, as a person in this world, Liu needs some sort of, like, role. He needs some sort of backer. He can't just be this person who pops up and runs around and no one knows who he is. So Prince Jing is, like, actively thinking several steps ahead how to keep him out of trouble. I can't wait for the scene eventually, I'm sure, where Liu feels so guilty and, like, has to admit to him that he's been a fish all along. (laughs) And Prince Jing can just stroke his scales gently and say, (laughs) I know. (laughs) Right? Or or right, I know. (laughs) After that, Prince Jing casually makes his exit so that he can transform back into a fish. And then he takes his fish into the throne room and whatnot. And the whole thing with Concubine Cho goes down. And unfortunately... Uh, Prince Jing and his servant are like in on it and they tell Prince Jing's other brothers, but they're not able to figure out a way to expose Concubine Cho. And so it's up to Liu to expose her himself. And so what he does is he, when she approaches his little fish bottle, which Prince Jing is carrying around with him, he just starts sneezing as a fish. And w- granted, nobody really knows what a fish sneezing looks like. Like, but since Prince Jing and his servant are in on it, they're like, uh, oh yeah, he's sneezing. And that means... He's allergic to Cyprus. <laughs> yeah, basically. It's like, oh yeah, the fish, um, he's really sensitive to strong smells. And Kong Ben like, what the fuck? You think it's a nice smell? And it's like, oh, well, maybe we should just check your wound one more time. And, like, they're, like, dragging the doctor aside. Like, like, if her wound smells like anything, you should say that. Yeah. And he's like, the doctor's like, oh yeah, this smells like Cyprus. That's weird. And then she gets in trouble and everything is resolved. Nice. Liu has saved the day once again. Sneezing fish plot device. Yeah. Classic. (laughs) And at this point, um, Liu is noticing that there has been many small deviations in the plot thus far. So there's kind of this growing concern in his mind that the plot is growing more and more unfamiliar. And he's worried about how things will turn out even though he's pretty confident that prince jing has some sort of protagonist halo on him Mm. but that's kind of interesting as well that you know there might be a point where he doesn't really know what's going on yeah a little bit more suspenseful Uh, but he's also wondering if you know like prince jing did with the assassin in the first book he's like he wonders like would prince jing kill someone again if it becomes like plot relevant he's still kind of wondering who he is as a person like that and it comes up almost immediately after that because prince jing takes li yu as a fish to go spy on the second prince who's been grounded he's under house arrest and this is the one that concubine cho is trying to protect as his as her son and he's not doing so good under house arrest he's kind of a little emotionally unstable as is and so they're on top of the roof together fish and prince and he like takes off a roof tile and prince jing takes the little fish plush that was used in the first volume from the system he's been holding on to it this whole time ever since he discovered it and he lowers it down on a fishing line into the prince's soup oh my god and the prince who has started to suspect that this fish in particular is out to get him yeah. and is somehow ma- masterminding his demise um you know starts to take a bite out of his soup and sees the fish in it and starts freaking out he has a total mental breakdown oh my god he goes absolutely batshit and he was like why are we here doing this and he's like oh like prince jing is showing me that he is getting revenge for my sake like he's He's kind of tormenting the second prince 
in this like kind of justice way that isn't actually harming anyone yeah. but is still showing that he he remembers and he hasn't forgotten and he's Aww. gonna pay back and so Li Yu thinks that that's really sweet of him Aww. and that's kind of answers the question in his mind but like what prince jing would do if someone wronged him yeah right he's like not murder just a little prank just a little prank that's nice what Li Yu doesn't see however is that immediately after that uh out of Li Yu's sight he gives an order to his servants and to the, murder him <laughs> the second prince happens to accidentally get drunk and fall into a pond and almost die oh from drowning his oh. life is safe but after that he is absolutely like he is not the same like he, mind he's, broken yeah he's mind broken for sure he's like muttering to himself constantly he's just he is a shell of a person <laughs> oh my god okay <laughs> once again he thinks some sort of evil fish spirit is out to get him <laughs> yeah so there is still a very harsh ruthless side of prince i King. like that though exactly and we're going to get Li Yu's thoughts on this as he maybe discovers some of what's been going on behind his fishy back. But he's like, yeah. could I love a murderer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Jing's fish slash boyfriend care guide. Provide an enrichment filled enclosure. So we've seen how far Prince Jing will go to like get him like the biggest tank possible and, you know, put tea bowls around his room so that he can splash wherever he wants to go uh, imagine how he could possibly one up all of that make a little train for him <laughs> kind of <laughs> but instead of a train it's a massive pawn system in his manor with like interconnecting paths oh my god and a scaled city under the water that matches like the outside towns <laughs> what and includes a little model of himself down there as well as other people oh my and gosh. whatnot so he just creates like a whole world for because leo has never actually been outside of the manor like yeah. he's gone to the palace he's never been like and seen the outside world essentially in this book but did he's... prince jing sculpt all this out of clay or something oh no he has hella servants oh okay, he just commissions okay. this shit that he's makes like more a rich sense. furry yeah <laughs> <laughs> so a normal furry yes <laughs> yes so he just like this huge pond and just for him That's to be able so to like cute. swim around what? and like explore all these like little buildings and stuff and Liu, it's so cute because Liu, even though he's a person, he absolutely like lives vicariously as a fish. Like he, he dives into that pond and he's like swimming around and he's like playing the thing. He finds a little Prince Jing figure and he goes, hey, and he knocks him over and then he like puts him back up again, plays with him. <laughs> oh and then my he's God. like, and then he's kind of touched when he realizes like, oh my God, like Prince Jing does all of this for me. And like, there's he doesn't really have anyone in his life to take care of him or love him. And so he goes and swims and takes a little fish decoration off the wall. And he swims back to the Prince Jing figure and puts a little little fish next to him. Stop! So that they're always together. That's so... Oh my god, I could cry over that. That I is know. so sweet. It's oh, so sweet. That is really cute. And Liu is really just touched by this giant gesture. And so um, that night he like hopped because, OK, Prince Jing kind of was worried that he would like the pond enclosure so much that he wouldn't actually want to like be with him anymore, that mm. he wouldn't want to be in like the little bottle that he carries around or be in like the fish tank in Prince Jing's room because why would you, right? Like, that's yeah. so small and cramped in prison. But Liu, of course, hops right back into the bottle and wants to stay with him and wants Aww. to go back into the the tank in his room as well. Like, it doesn't change how much he actually wants to spend time with Prince Jing. Oh, that's so really that's really sweet. sweet. And so that night, um, while Prince Jing is sleeping, Liu is thinking about just how touched he is by how much Prince Jing care cares for him. And he hops out of his tank and into the tea bowls and he splashes up to his bed and he just has to express his his gratitude and affection by giving him a little kiss on the nose. Oh, a nose kiss? That is really sweet. Um, and, and Prince Jing's like, my essence. <laughs> Literally. Literally, but he's like, my nose? 
like that definitely doesn't count and so the sleeping prince jing like kind of rolls over and gives him a little kiss back oh my gosh he really does kiss him as a fish he really does <laughs> Wow. He's trying to help his pathetic fish cultivate since he clearly doesn't know how to do it himself. I see the beauty in this. <laughs> Thank you. Because it's really cute. Yeah. And after this huge gesture, the emperor is well aware of Liu being Prince Jing's beloved pet fish. And he's also got it in his head that Liu is an auspicious fish. Mm. Yes. Because he's kind of been, in, you know present even involved in all of these intrigues coming to life light and things like that so he's like that's an auspicious fish so now the other princes are like not only does my brother have this annoying pet fish but the emperor thinks it's like the coolest fish ever <laughs> so the third prince shows up at prince string's manor and he's like i want to buy your fish with like a shit ton of gold and silver and liu's little fishy mouth just drops seeing all the sparkly gold and silver and Prince Jing is like, hmm, he likes gold and silver. He wants he would he would totally want to be sold. He doesn't even want to be with me. That was a little bit. Yeah. But of course Prince Jing does not sell his fish. And so after he notices Liu's reaction to seeing all the gold and silver, he uh, switches out the stones in his aquarium tank in Prince Jing's bedroom with silver stones and his little leaf blanket with one of gold embroidery. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he just spoils the shit out of his He's like, fish. Hmm, you want to be with the guy with the gold and silver? Well, I'll give you all the gold and silver. Yeah. That's so cute. And Lee is just well aware of like why he's doing this too. And he's just like, oh my God. And he truly does appreciate it. He's like, oh my God, this is so shiny. He yeah. loves shiny things. He really does. Fantastic. He's very fish coated. <laughs> At this point, the second stage of the main mission is unlocked in the system, okay? And it's called Tyrant's Pet Fish for Revitalizing the Family. And the goal is basically to improve both the tyrant's and fish's life through smaller steps. So the first small mission that is part of this main mission is called Indulge with the Tyrant. No other context is given, so Li Yu is led to believe that indulge in this case is to indulge in drink and that he should drink wine with the tyrant. Mm in order to complete this mission. And so he sets about doing this. He transforms into human and then tries to get some wine. Liu's servants are all like made aware that, hey, this random twink is going to appear and just give him whatever he wants. <laughs> like treat him with like every respect you would give me, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. they're just like, Prince Jing has a concubine now, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but of course they're also reporting back on like what he's doing. So Prince Jing just like, gets the word like, yeah, he asked for wine. He's like, who the hell is he drinking wine with? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing that it's going to be for him. So he's running around preparing for this. And Prince Jing, just seeing him like run around in the open of his manor is just so enchanted with him. He just loves looking at him. He's like, oh my goodness, his waist is so slender. Oh my God, he doesn't even know how to tie his belt properly. Oh. Look at his butt. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at his wrists. Oh, his wrists. Like, oh my. He's, just, he's objectifying him to the max, but it's really cute. And he even sets aside some time to teach Liu how to write Aww. properly, since he doesn't know how to do that. Yeah. And it's really cute. He just, like, sits behind them and, like, guides his hand. Aww. And, like, Liu gets a little flustered. He's like, oh my god, what is happening? What are these doki dokis I'm feeling in my chest? Aww. That was a really great scene. And at this point... I just stopped to myself and I was thinking about how much I appreciate how this is written because like not once have these books ever been boring or difficult to read and you'd think that they would be because Prince Jing isn't able to have a conversation with him outright and as a fish Liu also can't communicate outright they're both the same in that sense but like there's like tons of scenes where they're really not able to communicate the way we would typically imagine characters communicating with each other like they often are not having direct conversations with each other and when Prince Jing does communicate it's through writing and so you would think that it would be really boring in a lot of scenes with them together without that sort of natural conversation but it never feels difficult to read it's never stilted it's never boring it truly just flows so naturally, and I think that that's so cool. Yeah. Putting the fish in auspicious. 
auspicious. <laughs> yes. So, I have made a diagram of the next important plot scene. If you want to try to deci- decipher what's happening in that image. Fish jumps out of the water and knocks a man's hat off. You were so right. I did such a good job. <laughs> <laughs> what type of man? A monk. Yes. Yes. All right. And with that, <laughs> once again, Prince Jing's brothers are at it again with the conniving and plotting against him. And so now they are trying to use his auspicious fish to his downfall by convincing the emperor that the fish is actually not auspicious or that it's too auspicious. And so the route they're going with there is to bribe members of the Astrological Bureau to tell the emperor that the auspicious fish is actually like gaining golden scales as a sign that it's transforming into a dragon like metaphorically and the transformation into a dragon is a symbol of like obtaining the throne because the dragon is associated with only the emperor and so it's like saying hey prince jing is actually trying to usurp Usurp. the throne and his fish is a sign of that his fish is a bad omen metaphor clearly yes right um, because the emperor is planning on having the auspicious fish tested by the astrological bureau to like confirm its auspiciousness. <laughs> nice. Yes. So the brothers are planning to get ahead of the game by rigging the results, and Prince Jing is already two steps ahead of them and has his own people in the bureau and is preventing that from happening. But then his brothers have another ploy on top of that, a little backup plan and Liu is going to be left with solving that problem for everybody. Okay. So they're all, they've all been summoned to the throne room where the Astrological Bureau people are there and they are inspecting Liu and Liu is aware that this resembles a part of the plot he's read before and so he's starting to suspect that some of that will come into play. Of course, the fish wasn't involved, but he kind of wonders like, oh, are the prince is going to do something like this? And sure enough, um, when the bureau is like, yep, this is a good fish, good sign for the country and the emperor and everybody. And the prince is like, hey, what? Like, uh, let's bring in some other guys to test the fish as well. Just a double, triple check because we heard this weird nursery rhyme about a fish and uh, Jin Prince Jing usurping the throne or something. And so yeah, let's just double check. So they bring in a bunch of monks. And Lee was like, I remember when a bunch of monks were introduced by these princes in the novel, and these monks are fake. And I know this because as fake monks, they would have been freshly shaven, not already shaven from being monks. Okay. Okay. So they're already kind of itching their necks like they're oh like, my gosh. Like they've just <laughs> been shaved. And as fake monks, they would be missing the uh, burn marks that would be on their heads from being ordained as monks. And so the only way to reveal that would be to remove their hats. And so as a fish, the you only has one way of going about that. And so when the monks approach the fish, he breaks out of the crystal jar that Prince Jing is carrying him out of. And he just whacks the hat off of the monk's head. And lo and behold, no burn marks. Everyone's like, that's a fake monk. The princes are in trouble. The emperor is mad. Everything's in chaos. Everything's being investigated. And in the immediate chaos, Prince Jing reaches down and like cuts his hand on one of the pieces of glass. Because, of course, when everyone asks, how did this just happen? He, instead, of the prin- um, instead of the fish just randomly jumping out of the bottle, which is a really suspicious activity, <laughs> uh, Prince Jing is like, I uh suspected something was wrong and of course couldn't say anything so i threw the bottle at the monk and everyone believes it wow they work together as a team yeah it's so cute they're actually able to understand each other's intentions quite often which makes these little hijinks come off quite well but of course prince jing has to develop a fever from his cut and he falls ill after Does he that. get delirious and then make out with him? <laughs> no. Well, no. 
a common trope though <laughs> yes that's true um but Liu is so upset that he got hurt because of his actions and he's thinking i wasn't thinking i wasn't thinking how prince jean could have gotten hurt he feels so much guilt about all of that that he of course turns into a human um while prince jean is sleeping and takes care of him by like you know like putting wet cloth on his head and watching over him and feeding him sweets and fussing over him Aww. and Prince Jing is so thrilled that he has appeared to fuss over him that of course he pretends like it hurts really bad when oh he's already gosh. been taken care of by a oh doctor and he pretends to shiver so that Liu will let him use his lap as a pillow my dick is just so cold <laughs> basically <laughs> yep so Prince Jing does get some love and care out of that, and Liu clearly cares about him a lot, so that Aww. was sweet. At any rate, the next time he enters the system after that, he discovers that he has completed the Koi side quest. Which was be gay. Which was be protective. <laughs> as the, Because Koi's are a symbol of protection, mm. and by protecting Prince Jing... How's a Koi protecting anything? It's our friends had a koi pond and raccoons stole them. If a little raccoon reaching in and grabbing the koi and running away, they can't even protect you from the raccoons. What are they protecting you from? <laughs> you fools. The raccoons would have broken and entered. <laughs> so koi are traditionally a symbol of protection. And when he acted to protect Prince Jing, he completed the be a koi side quest. Mm. And the... Um, to unlock the reward, he has to experience being a koi. And so that puts him into a dream illusion where he sees Prince Jing as a child. And he is a very chubby little toddler from many years ago. And the second prince is fighting with him. The second prince being quite a bit older. And they're bickering and, you know, throwing each other around. Can Prince Jing talk as a kid? He can't. Okay. So the second prince is just bullying him. And then the second prince pushes him into a pond and runs away. Oh my god. Yeah, so... That's where he developed the koi kink. It, you're not wrong. Kind of like the Batman well thing. Wait, what happened with... Was he in a well with bats? Yeah, Batman like fell in a well and there were a bunch of bats and he got scared by the bats and then he became the thing that scared him most. Okay, John Green. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's like you put the killing thing in your mouth. But, but don't let it kill you. <laughs> put yeah. the bat in your mouth and become Batman. <laughs> oh my god. Put the coin in your mouth, son. <laughs> okay, so he's drowning. And to prevent Prince Jean from drowning, um, Liu jumps into the pond. He's a fish. <laughs> and he tries to pull Prince Jing out of the pond. But he's just a little tiny fish. And he can't do it. And so he like wishes and prays for the strength to be able to do it and he transforms into a bigger koi i'm picturing like magic carp transformation <laughs> Close enough. Yes. and so as a as a proper koi he is able to pull the toddler to safety and people come to his rescue and he is able to be saved nice but before then um he has a very sweet moment with toddler Prince Jing, where he, because he's just so endeared to Prince Jing on every level, um, he teaches Prince Jing how to properly pet a fish, you oh. know? Like, and so Prince Jing is a little toddler, like, pets the fish and is, like, so happy. And they have just a cute moment playing together before people come to take care of him and whatnot. Aww. And uh, in this illusion, um, he notices a discrepancy in Prince Jing's name because currently... Prince Jing's name is Tian Qi, but it used to be Tian Jing, and the, the title Jing is still in his name, but his name seems to have, like, changed or is different from what it was in this backstory. So, Li was like, that's weird, I wonder why that is. Um, but the emperor shows up, and he takes care of Prince Jing, and is, like, super mad, and, like, orders the doctors around, and so, and then the illusion fades, and he isn't transformed after that illusion, he still has to, like, click to unlock the reward but he's able to now transform into a koi fully okay but he doesn't do that because he's like that's gonna be mega suspicious if i just randomly transform into a koi how am i gonna do that um at this point though i was wondering like how much of a dream or illusion 
is that oh you mean because he's not a koi currently yeah he's, he's a carp he's a carp yes. oh, okay so he's he can a, he can turn into a beautiful fish now. yes got it like he's already got the gold scales happening yeah. which was already really weird and everyone was like that's why you're auspicious so he's literally gonna evolve yeah okay mm-hmm. at this point i was wondering like how much of a dream or an illusion is this because since we're technically in the story of a book anything's possible right so like yeah. what did that actually happen like did he some uh, basically go back in time and do that mm-hmm. and that is revealed to be the case okay a little bit later on but yeah essentially yes he did reappear in his backstory and that explains so much because it's like at the beginning of the novel prince jing who seems to be like cold and detached from everything he has a thing for fish already yeah, ingrained in him from that yeah, childhood ab- memory absolutely like he's so it's a little bit paradoxical he caused the memory in yeah. the past which actually affected the future I right guess. yeah so he sees that little fish on the ground dying and he wants to save it and he like already is inclined to pet a fish like he it's a self-fulfilling prophecy absolutely okay okay right and the thing regarding the name um during that scene where prince jing almost drowned was saved when the emperor arrives he sees a golden light in the pond which was someone's golden scales but it was like this really beautiful mesmerizing scene yeah and that really sticks in his mind because um after that like terrible incident he changes prince jing's name um as a kind of way to change his fate Mm -hmm. um instead of fat little bullied kid now you're beautiful golden kid (laughs) essentially i mean it's like this terrible thing happened to you you must have like terrible misfortune so we're gonna change your name and attempt to like get you a new fate going yeah and so change from tianjing to tianqi with qi meaning pond and the pond (laughs) referring to the golden light in the pond not the pond that just almost took your life that's kind of fucked up it's like a little bit <laughs> now that you think of it i get it i get it but yeah yeah it's like well it's yeah t- trying to turn a negative into positive i guess Pendas, I get it, I get but it. yeah that was a little hooked, fucked up um anyways but because of his of uh, the fever that prince jing suffered after drowning as a child he doesn't actually remember all of this mm-hmm. so he doesn't actually remember being with the fish he just has a kind of like a innate fish yeah 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 there you go kind of going back to the present the prince jing also has a fever right now being sick and so uh liu is there taking care of him and he accidentally falls asleep in human form next to prince jing prince jing wakes up finds him next to him in bed it's like it's happening (laughs) oh my god but his fish doesn't try to suck any essence from him Hmm. he is sleeping and in his sleep he's like talking about like little chubs he's talking he's thinking of prince jing Aww. when he was really little and says little chubs and he's like who the fuck is this fat man trying to steal my fish he literally is so pressed about this he spends he like orders a bunch of servants be like track you down find little chubs you track down any fat man who has interacted with my fish who's trying to steal my boyfriend he's like i don't know why i don't know why he's a thing for this fat guy but I'm taking him down oh has no idea god. that it's him oh my god so that's that's happening in the background of that but um in his distress and resentment towards little chubs he steals many a kiss from liu as he's sleeping oh my god really <laughs> yeah so gives him lots of little kisses and revenge on the lips. in a human mm-hmm. oh my god yeah he really likes liu yeah like, that's super it's cute. So cute so at this point everyone knows that liu in twink form is living in the manor somewhere and everyone assumes that he and Prince Jing are banging already. So, got that going for them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> After a little while, Liu does turn back into a fish, still asleep. And so Prince Jing just plops him back into the tank. And Liu is none the wiser that he was discovered at all. And somehow still thinks his secret is safe. So, regarding this backstory comes into play again. Um, Prince Jing goes to a friend of his grandfather's, um, a monk named Liao Kong, who does him a solid by, you know, speaking on behalf of Prince Jing and telling the emperor, hey, you know that auspicious fish? It is so auspicious that it is actually part koi. And because it's part koi, it's actually going to transform into a koi. So 
that won't be suspicious if that happens. And so <laughs> uh, Liu is given a route to become a koi without anybody being like, burn the witch. How convenient. Yes. Thanks to Prince Jing looking out for him and his golden scales as is. Aww. And he also learns from Liao Kong that like, because Liao Kong is a very wise old man and he is kind of like, he looks at the fish and he kind of just has a weird understanding of things going on. And he's like, I know that this fish actually is special because when you were drowning, like I saw this fish swimming in the pond beforehand. And so I think it's the same fish. I think this carp spirit is, is here because of you. I think this carp spirit and you have a special connection. And so Prince Jing is like, ugh. So, kind of solidifies his carp spirit theory, right. knowing his backstory with him. So he changes from a black fish with gold scales to a silver fish with gold scales, and he grows in size again. So he's about like the size of Prince Jing's forearm, Ooh. I think. So he's a pretty hefty fish at this mm, point. Okay. But nobody is alarmed or suspicious at this point, and although it's a very sudden transformation when he accepts that reward, like everyone kind of... Holds or like back. it's auspicious, anything can happen. Right. Like Prince Jing doesn't tell the Emperor right away. He kinda just lets everyone think that it happens slowly over time instead of just overnight. Fish carp things. And Liu gets three stats upgraded in the fishy system. He has good luck added to slapping villains, being well fed and well clothed, and a really vague stat called one shot and done. Which I'm not sh- sure what that means. Li Yu doesn't know what it means. Okay. I'm assuming it must mean something sexual. Like, I don't even want to say. I don't even want to know. Look, what is one Was shot? Was it and already th- completed? No, it's like he gets like these extra luck stat. Like he gets like, oh, if he does this. Yeah. But, like in these categories, he has extra luck. He's got to make Prince Jin come so I'm thinking super if, quickly. Well, uh, like one shot and done. Like it's like if Prince Jin were to finish inside him one time, would he get pregnant? Like that's the only thing I could think of. Okay. I, don't, I cannot believe your mind went there. I don't know. Well, what else is it supposed to mean? What do you think it means? Well, now I think it means that. <laughs> oh my god! I, try, I sat there and I was trying to think what this one shot and done mean. Yeah. So after Liu transforms, he's worried that Prince Jing will have some sort of weird reaction to how differently he's changed. But Prince Jing has no reaction and Liu doesn't even know that he knows everything. Like he wouldn't be phased if he turned into a human. Yeah. Like he's not phased at anything. He already knows. <laughs> you invents cucumber salad oh my god and it's not good back to the indulge with the tyrant mission liu fabricates the excuse of having dinner together as humans to partake in some wine together as well and so he goes into the kitchen and makes a big mess and ultimately can't make anything palatable except for some smashed cucumber, which I think is actually just like cucumber bits in like a sauce, like a soy sauce sort of mixture. It sounds delicious actually, but in this case, it's kind of not that good. And then he has dinner with Liu, has the wine together. Liu enjoys his cucumber salad and then under the pretext of being drunk, Prince Jing decides to go for it. He's like, my my fishy boyfriend invited me on this date and I, I know that he is a carp spirit who wants to suck essence from me and I know how affectionate he is as a fish and I love this, I love this person so much and I'm going to hold him down on the bed and kiss him. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. Now, from Liu's perspective, Prince Jing is drunk, has clearly mistaken him for someone else, or is coming on to a near stranger, presumably because he thinks he's some kind of floozy, and he's not happy. There's no reason to believe that Prince Jing has any good intentions from this, and he's he's very shocked, and he's freaked out, and he <laughs> reacts by, um, with just utter like shock and embarrassment by biting his tongue, kicking him in the balls, and jumping up and shouting, I'm not some other lover! (laughs) Oh my god. I may be a fish, but I ain't no floozy. Absolutely. Like, truly, Liu is more mortified and embarrassed by how he he thinks he's being perceived than by necessarily what Prince Jing is doing. Yeah. Um, They're not at all on the same page. 
and Liu immediately runs away and turns into a fish mid-escape and thus evades any sort of communication wow. <laughs> after that. And Prince Jing is more confused than anything. To be fair, no one has ever taught him how these types of relationships are supposed to go. You're the, how it generally helps to tell someone you like them before trying to kiss them. So, yeah, he's really confused on how that ended up badly. And Liu is full on ignoring him, even as a fish. He knows that it doesn't really make sense. As a fish, he shouldn't have any reason to be ignoring Prince Jing, but Prince Jing finds that his fish is so mad at him that he won't, he won't look at him, he won't even eat, he goes pretty much on hunger strike for several days, and then finally gives up and does eat something. And by the time he does eat something, he's like, oh, it's been a few days, I'm not really mad anymore. But uh, he still is a little bit resentful of the situation. At that point, Liu enters the system and finds out he's completed the indulgence mission. Ah. And he's like, I thought I heard a notification somewhere <laughs> during that makeout session. And I am starting to suspect that I am in some kind of dating sim. Oh my god. And sure enough, the system is like, yep, you sure are. Wow. And Liu is pissed. He's so pissed. He's like, what? What the absolute hell? He doesn't like that. He doesn't like that these missions have been kind of setting him up for this situation that he wasn't like emotionally prepared for at all. Right. It's like, yeah, like I like my feelings were involved in this. Like you can't just like make me like fall in love with someone. That's not going to happen. He's very much stubborn about that. But what he does learn about the missions is that the first set of missions required like only the necessary results. Like they were very specific results. Like this has to happen or this has to happen and it doesn't really matter. They just have to be completed but the current set of missions he's on has a little bit more freedom they are like voluntary and kind of be they can be completed however they want so it's like if he did want to follow the system missions he does still have like a fair degree of agency and it's based on sincerity like you can't c complete it without having it in your heart sort mm -hmm. of thing but he's still extremely mad at the system and refuses to complete anymore because he is very blindsided by this information <laughs> that he is not in a moa pet system but a dating sim right uh, but you may be wondering how prince dream intends to apologize to his fish who has been ignoring him for several days and so he orders his servants to permanently carve onto the walls every which way so that it is impossible for liu to avoid seeing it there are no other lovers. I adore you. Wow. Oh my gosh. So kudos to him for communicating properly at the first opportunity with a very big gesture of apology. Mm -hmm. Like these, these marks do not go away. The next time he has guests over, everyone's very embarrassed. Like what, <laughs> what is going on? It's very sweet and straightforward, just like him. <sighs> Liu, like, he, he would do so much for Liu to be happy with him today. It's kind of hard not to be moved by him. Yeah. And Liu admits to himself, like, it's not like I didn't know that he didn't have other lovers. Mm -hmm. I knew that. Mm -hmm. But I was just humiliated that he thought I was easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now he knows that what Prince Jing did wasn't meant to disrespect him in any way. It was out of pure feelings. He yeah. didn't anticipate Prince Jing had feelings for him. Like, again, he has no way of knowing that Prince Jing is connected. My affectionate fish who I love so much with this beautiful human I love so much. Yeah. He's just like, I'm just this random human appeared and somehow Prince Jing got a crush on me. And then Pr Liu is very sad about it. Yeah. Because he's like, Prince Jing is a victim of the system just as much as I am. And like, I've been doing all these missions for the system and it's not his fault that he was designed to have feelings for me at some point. And I just can't reciprocate because I don't, I don't, I don't feel that way towards him. And I don't want my feelings to be manipulated that way either. So we're, we're in a terrible situation together. And so he doesn't want to hurt Prince Jing's feelings by completing missions in the future. He's a very conscientious fish but his anger does fade at this point. He does forgive him. Chu Yan Yu's evil plan, seduce Prince Jing. Yes, so you remember the delicate concubine from the original novel. Mm -hmm. He has been hanging out in the manor as technically a servant, but 
he's just kind of cast away into a part of the manor no one goes to. Okay. And he is making his, like, last shot to pr seduce Prince Jing on behalf of the sixth prince who he loves. And it goes a little bit like this. One, be hot. Check. <laughs> Two, strike while his favorite twink is missing. Right, so after the whole kissing incident, Liu turns into a fish and he just doesn't transform back into a human since then. So everyone in the manor um, just thinks that the prince's concubine has run away. Right. So that's when Ch Chu Yanyu decides to strike, move in, while Prince Jing is missing his favorite lover. Feed his fish. Very demure. <laughs> Chu Yanyu has got it into his head that the reason why Prince Jing was moved by this twink, who clearly was not more beautiful than him, yeah. be was because he was given the job of taking care of his fish, which obviously would give them t chances to interact with each other. Mm -hmm. So he's like, that has to be the secret sauce. I will prove that I am a good fish mama and Prince Jing will love me. Yes. So he goes into his room and which he knows is like overstepping by a lot, but he's like, it'll pay out. And so he starts feeding the fish and does a little bit of evil monologuing to Liu, which helps us understand what's going on. Very good. And then poison him with aphrodisiac. Not very demure. Not very mindful. <laughs> <laughs> a little cutesy. It's a, it's a little cutesy. <laughs> um, he's like, there's so many freaking tea bowls around the room. I guess I'll just put aphrodisiac in all of them, not knowing that they're all for the fish, pretty much, except for uh, one. One cup is actually a cup for Prince Jing. And so he puts the aphrodisiac in all of the cups and hangs out there until Prince Jing shows up. Oh no. Prophet? What happens? Ugh. So he shows up and it's like, Prince Jing, I came to feed your fish. Would you like some tea? I'll pour you some tea. And so he very mindfully, very demurely pours Prince Jing a cup of tea. And Liu, as a fish, is in the tank like, oh my god, like, where is your poison tester? What, you're just gonna let this guy, you're just gonna let this guy give you some tea? He's like, in your room. This he is better totally jump suspicious. into that cup. <laughs> that would be good. That would have been good. So Lee was like, ah, I have to do everything around here. Because he still hasn't talked. He hasn't shown his face. He hasn't talked to Prince Jing at all. Yeah. He's been mad this whole time. Well, of course he cares too much about Prince Jing. So just let him be poison. So he secretly jumps out of the tank and transforms into a human out of sight. Puts on some clothes. And then he runs out and dramatically he's like, Prince Jing, don't touch that cup. It's poison. Oh my God. Wow. Now. Prince Jing, of course, has been aware of Chu Yan Yu's plot the whole time and essentially allowed him to do that as a ginormous ploy to get Li Yu to transform into human again so they could actually... <laughs> oh my god! So they could actually, you know... He talk dated him. Up. He did! Wow. And so Chu Yan Yu is taken away by guards and Li Yu almost immediately realizes that he's been had. Oh, he's like, damn wow. it! And so he's angry all over again at being lied to and so he punches... Ch Prince Jing in the chest and he runs away. <laughs> ah! Yes! <laughs> Poor Prince Jing is like, I just want to talk! <laughs> can't even do that! <laughs> but Li Yu can't control, like, his transformation. He has two hours and then, like, he can't tr transform back into a fish sooner than that. So he jumps into the pond as a human and is like, don't chase after me! And Prince Jing, being the respectful king he is, is like, doesn't chase after him. And so Li Yu, like, uses a reed to, like, you know, breathe under wa water as a little, as you see in a cartoon. Yeah. And he just hangs out in the water until his time's up and he transforms into a fish and then mm -hmm. he is able to truly escape. But unfortunately, he gets sick from being in the cold water as a human for too long, right. as one does, right. getting caught in the rain, so to speak. And Prince Jing knows his fish is sick, when he finally finds this fish again. And like he like, cause like Li Yu falls asleep for like a really long time underwater and Prince Jing is so worried. And he like, like goes into the water and tries to find him. And it's just, when he finally finds his sick fish, he like, he tries to find a doctor that can take care of him. He knows there's something wrong with his fish and everyone else is like, are you sure? Like, he's just a fish. Like, how do you know he's sick? But he's like, I know. Mm -hmm. And truly, Yi Yu, Liu is so sick that he actually transforms back into a human the next day 
to get medical care because he's like i'm not gonna make it as a fish he's like system am i okay and system's like you're fucked you better transform it's like what he's like i I can't help you i honestly am just the system (laughs) so he transforms as a delicate twink and then receives medical care and prince jing takes care of him while he's sick and does like the same things for him that he did for prince jing when he had a fever and of course like being sick and then like having someone care for you in human form like liu melts quite a lot and realizes that like liu has this unfailing care for him no matter no matter how mad he is at prince jing like prince jing's feelings never do change and that speaks to their depth and sincerity yeah and so now like he thinks to himself i can't really be mad at him for tricking me because like in a sense he's he's very quick to forgive prince jing for being a product of his time he's uh, he's like that we're in a historical novel where you know tricks and intrigue and stuff are come very naturally and are not things to be frowned on and ultimately Even if that weren't the case, I am the biggest liar here. I am lying to him about not being a fish. So I really can't be mad at him for tricking me in this case. So he forgives him for that. And even like works out some communication with Prince Jing being like, um, you're just gonna have to go or I'm just gonna have to disappear, but I'll come back tomorrow. Like working with his two hour transformation time thing. And Prince Jing, agrees to that easily to his surprise and so they spend a few days together like just enjoying each other's company as he recovers and it's really really sweet Mm. and he enjoys it i just thought it was so sweet yeah now you may be wondering what happens to chu yanyu because he's sleeping with the fishes (laughs) no (laughs) what prince jing tells him is that oh yeah he's been you know, he's been like sent off to have some time to reflect by himself, you know, so kind of just in time out. And so uh, as much as Lee, he was a little worried, he knows it is not his place to interfere when Chu Yanyu tried to poison Prince Jing. So he's like, okay, I wash my hands of that. What actually happens to Chu Yanyu? Chu Yanyu is in the dungeon in the manor, as one does. He is force fed the same aphrodisiac that he was going to poison Prince Jing with okay now chu yan yu is thinking worst case here he's like oh fuck they they're gonna do this and then they're gonna like send in like some guys to like just absolutely defile me yeah and i was honestly thinking the same thing like <laughs> like you know in a different kind of donme that's absolutely what happened but instead it's just like okay have fun suffering for a few days and so he's just left alone under the effects of this poison erect being, <laughs> yeah being tortured and it's like a which is honestly bad enough like it's horrible it's definitely again kind of a mind-breaking situation yeah he's not having a good time after that he manages to like like i think it's the the sixth prince who comes to visit prince jing and like chu yanyu is conveniently released at the same time so that he can like beg the sixth prince to, like take him back he's like i can't do this anymore i can't be here anymore he's like a total wreck and prince jing is able to confirm Chu Yanyu is working with the sixth prince yeah. by that interaction, even though the sixth prince is like, I don't know you, wench, get mm-hmm, off of me. Mm-hmm. So the intrigues continue, but that does seem to be the end of Chu Yanyu's involvement for now. Okay. Alas. Their first date! Yes! So even though Liu still intends to reject Prince Jing as nicely as possible, he can't resist being in- offered the invitation to go out to the market together. There's a special little market. And he's like, I know this is a date, but I can't resist. And so he accepts and gets all ready in a nice new outfit and finally figures out that all of the old clothes, the old hand-me-downs Prince Jing has been giving him have been like custom tailored and made for him. Nice. And so he is described with this line. It's so cute. He's like, he felt like his heart was pounced on by a little kitten. Aww. He's like so touched. He's like wee wee. That is so cute. And so he's like, I guess what's the harm in being wooed a little bit? Big mistake. But oh. <laughs> so he goes out, has a great time with Prince Jing, and 
finds that because he's going out in public with Prince Jing, the entire world is now seeing him as not just the prince's concubine, but his consort. Nice. Like, you are reached wifey status if you were being let outside the house. Ever since the kissing incident, by the way, he's been kind of grumpily referring to Prince Jing in his head as big asshole. Big asshole? Yeah, that big asshole. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) That brute, basically. Yeah. But... He still likes this big asshole very much. And so some highlights from their market date include, um, what's shown on the cover here is Prince Jing giving him a nice jade hairpin with a little fish on it. And he's like, and Lee who's like, wow, he really likes fish. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) Not knowing that it's also because he's a fish. And Liu runs into a scammer at the marketplace because he like tries on like, a bracelet or something and the guy's like well you have to buy it now yep you gotta you just have to and Liu mis- mischievously connives his way out of that one of his own effort and all is well that ends well but prince jing secretly has like his servants like beat the shit out of that guy as soon as Liu leaves <laughs> nice <laughs> so i like, love that i love that so it's just so funny because Liu is just like wandering through life completely unaware that like all of his enemies are being smited <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> We're a big fan. Now, Prince Jing's cousin, Ye Ching Huan, shows up at the restaurant that they're having having a meal at. And he has brought with him a very handsome young man that he's holding hands with. And Liu is like, oh my god, homosexuals. Wait, isn't he engaged to a princess? That can't be right. But it's actually his fiance dressed as a boy, and she is dressed as a boy so that she can come out and play at the market. And so he is like taking her out on a date, and they like are they all share a meal together. And Liu really likes the princess; she's so nice, and they seem like such a sweet couple together. Like even though it's an arranged marriage, that they are developing a fondness for each other, and it's so sweet. Wow. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, so that's really cool. And that's nice, too, because we get to see their wedding later Mm. in this volume. So we're getting to some juicy parts because on the way back in the carriage, Li Yu expresses to Prince Jing that he needs more time to figure out his feelings for him. Okay. Yes. So uh, because personal, that's what he tells Prince Jing, because personally, he's like, I spent so much time thinking of us as like pet and master, but now we've spent so much time like as a human with him together every day that I don't know how to differentiate my feelings and I don't really know what's romantic and what's not. And he also feels like a really great distance in their positions. Like he's like, even as humans, like he's a whole ass prince and I'm nobody with nothing. So that's kind of stressful. But hearing that, just hearing like, I need time to figure things out. Prince Jing just hugs him. Aww. Hugs him so tight as if he's about to kiss him. And Instead of kissing him, he leans in and kisses Liu on the forehead instead. Very sweet. And Liu has the moment of realization, the classic iconic moment of realizing that he was kind of anticipating him kissing him and wanted it. Oh, I see, I see. Kind of a, a, a case of it takes someone kissing you to figure out that you do like them romantically. Yeah. And he has a moment of clarity where he realizes that like a lot of his reactions was out of shyness and shock, but he wasn't really mad at Prince Jing for liking him. And so he does decide that he likes him. How sweet. Yeah. And so it's the first time he doesn't push away Prince Jing. And so they do end up kissing. <gasps> For realsies? For realsies. Oh, is it sweet? It's so sweet. It's overflowing with tenderness and affection. It's so, so nice. Oh. They're so sappy. And like at first, Lee was like, okay, let's not get carried away. But then he's like, never mind. I accept it. I accept everything. Aw. Wow. That's so sweet. Yeah. He just, all at once, he's like, ah, fine. Uh, We can date. (laughs) It's so funny. After all his resistance, he's like, that's all it took. And Prince Jing is so just so endeared to him. He loves him so much. Just being accepted in those moments, he like like kisses Liu's fingers devotedly and hugs him. He just expresses so much with his actions. And Liu has like a lot of like good thoughts about his relationship or like about the idea of a relationship between them. And he is realizing that 
they're like a lot of the barriers he put up like the reason why he couldn't accept having a relationship with prince jing were just barriers he put up on his end they weren't actually things stopping him it's just his own internal thoughts about what was proper and acceptable and not and he's also aware of the difference between modern relationships and relationships in this kind of historical context and the power imbalance of their positions if for some reason liking each other wasn't enough in the future he's like at some point prince jing is going to be emperor if something doesn't work out between us, like, I'm gonna be stuck. There's no going back. Like, I can't just stop dating him or get a divorce. I'm going to be his and I can't do anything about that. Like, he's very aware of the negative consequences of something going wrong. Mm -hmm. He also still chooses to commit himself to exploring the relationship in spite of that. Yeah. So I thought that was deep. I thought that was good. Because even though it's a very fluffy situation, it's still not ignoring, like, some of the potential consequences and he finally starts doing quests again and he redeems the reward for the indulgence quest now that he's no longer holding a grudge against the system mm -hmm. <laughs> and the reward he gets for that quest is to learn a secret about prince jing oh yep and so he gets to choose from four random secrets and so he chooses one and he learns what prince jing did to the second prince after oh. the the floating fish incident nice and he takes it quite well so he realizes that... Uh, He's okay with murder after all. A little bit. That's fine. Uh, he realizes that like Prince Jing is still a product of his time, essentially. He's like, he's going to do these like ruthless things to people who are threats to him or that he wants to get revenge on. He's like, it's the past. <laughs> it was brutal. Whatever. It's like, capital punishment's a thing. I'm not going to be able to change that. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough but he accepts that he's always been considerate to him as a fish and as a person he recognizes that it's coming out of a good place of wanting to protect his fish yeah so he's like i don't really know how to feel about that but it is what it is i'm not gonna make a big deal out of it he was boyfriend rules no staying the night yet yes so after their market date he's like okay next time they're human together he has written down on a sheet of paper the rules for Prince Jing to accept for them to officially be dating. Official. Officially. Officially. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Got it. Which means it's going to be official as long as Prince Jing accepts. And so, but he is still first and foremost concerned about keeping his secret that he is a fish. So yeah. certain things have to be accepted. So very first one, his biggest worry is that if they do it, that he will tr like lose track of time and transform into a fish mid sexy time. Oh my god! Like that is that is his, that is his worry. It's not like oh my god, I'm not ready for it. Or I don't want it. It's like no, literally, it's like I will lose track of time. Let I bone. It'll be more than two hours, and yes. then he's gonna be bone in a fish. <laughs> yeah, he's like I will not let that happen. Oh that is horrifying. God. Oh my god! So he's like no stay in the night yet, and he tells that to Prince Jing that it's like it's just a yet thing. It's not yeah. forever. Okay, okay. Don't ask where he's going when he disappears. Yep. He's like, let me do my thing. <laughs> Don't get mad at him. <laughs> it's a good rule to have for a boyfriend. <laughs> it's like, I know what you do when you get mad at people. <laughs> and no other lovers. Yep. Which is like, look at the freaking walls that I've ruined. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, <laughs> and it's also funny because Liu also knows it's like, seems kind of unfair to put this as a rule considering the walls. He puts it on there anyway, and Prince Jing, like, agrees instantly. He has no qualms about any of that. Yeah. No notes. He's all right. And um, he even, like, hangs up the rules on the wall of his bedroom to show Liu that he's really, he's keeping them in mind. And he Aww. responds by writing a poem for Liu about his acceptance. I officially accept. Yes, because Liu's like, okay, you have to remember them. You have to memorize them. And Prince Jing is like, of course, naturally. And so he gets a brush and some ink and some paper. And it says, like, considering Xiao Yu's comprehension skills, he smiled and wrote down a silly little poem. So apparently, he knows his fish wouldn't appreciate a really actually good poem. <laughs> <It's just kind laughs> funny. That's funny. But this is what he writes. Your decision to stay the night, leave whenever you delight. With you, I will never fight. I'll love only you in this life. Wow. Isn't that 
so cute. That is so cute. Imagine, he even made it rhyme. He made it rhyme with all of I'm the- sure it's way better in Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good in English, though. Yeah. Like, I like how each line corresponds to each of the rules. Like, yeah. I just thought that was so cute. And then the last one should have said, no need to be coy. Oh my god. And I love that Liu loved the poem and thought he was so brilliant for that. Oh so my god. He's like, his highness was amazing, especially that last line. Now that he'd committed them all to memory, the next step was to kiss, hug, and shower him with affection, right? Aww. So he... Um, Wait. Also, to go back to the, yes. this being a beef leaf AU, doesn't that just work perfectly with, like, Hushun being a scholar, writer? Yeah. Like, anyways. And she's anyways. Hushun being a little bit... Not a scholar. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But yeah. Yes. I love that Liu's like response is like, awesome, he agreed to my terms. Now I must shower him with affection so yes. that he is rewarded properly. Yes. And so he sits on the desk and kisses Prince Jing. Ooh, yes, very nice. sexy. Very nice. Yeah. That's hot. And thus begins their boyfriend era, okay? I just cannot stress how sappy and cute and just wholesome. It's just lovely. Aww. The whole thing. It's just very straightforward and sweet. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Prince Jin going to work like? Yes. So Prince Jin gets a job. His father, the emperor, mm -hmm. gives him a job in the Ministry of Works. It's kind of like, sorry your brothers hate you so much. Here's a job to show that I value and respect you. But it's also like a really easy job that doesn't matter so if you do fail at it or can't do it because you're mute it's okay yeah okay um and prince jing doesn't want to do it at all because he's like this just means less time with my boyfriend yeah this is a terrible deal yeah thanks dad yeah but is encouraged by Li Yu to do it because he's like oh my god this is great like you like i know that prince jing needs to show the emperor how capable he is and this is perfect for the plot so he encourages prince jing to do the job and with that encouragement he goes to work and liu doesn't realize that prince jing has no intention of leaving him at home and so not only is he tasked with all of the human boyfriend tasks of like like as a human boyfriend he's like okay i'm going to encourage my boyfriend i'm going to make him a bento box i'm going to like wish him like, like he's like i am goodbye the wife. i am the yes, proper wife absolutely he's like i take my boyfriend duty seriously yeah. i'm a stay-at-home boyfriend and i'm doing my job to the max yeah and then he's like wait you're taking me with you to work as a fish and so he's like i get no break at all <laughs> <laughs> so he packs him a lunch and then goes to work with him as a fish that's hilarious and i want to this is my favorite thing ever he actually teaches Prince Jing the word boyfriend Aww. and dating, like in the most modern sense possible, because those words do not exist historically. Yeah. And so, like, Prince Jing, like, learns what those means in approximate and doesn't, it's just like, okay, this must be some sort of carp spirit thing. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, this is very cool and traditional for carp spirits. Oh, this yeah. Dating a boyfriend this thing. This ancient lingo. <laughs> yes. And he is so proud of having a boyfriend and so he like Aww. absolutely brags about it at like the every possible opportunity and how he might how he does this is he carries around pre-made notes with him and it's so like, i have a boyfriend literally like hands people his card i have a boyfriend Stop. he goes to work and people are like wow that's a ginormous bento box you have there and he's like whoops out note my boyfriend made it for me oh my god and so what are these other ancient people's like, reaction to seeing this like word right they're like what's a boyfriend yeah and he whips out another note he's like it means my future consort oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes that's a boyfriend means. it means we are kissing yeah <laughs> that is so cute that is so it's cute so so freaking cute oh i love that i love that they are actually boyfriends yeah they're boyfriends. They're not just in so a. Proud. They're not in a weird ancient history situationship. They are. They are straight up dating boyfriends. That's amazing. And he loves it, and he loves the bento box that his boyfriend made for him. Even though Liu still can't cook, he burned the rice. He, it, it's just, it's bad. Yeah, it's so bad. And of course, Prince Jing eats it all. Mm hmm. And Liu as a fish is like, ooh, he's eating it. He he must it must be so delicious. Oh, oh I want a bite as well. And like Prince Jing side eyes him. It's like it will make him sick. And just eats the rest of it. He's like, oh, it must be so good. He doesn't even want to share. Aww. I'm gonna keep making stuff. <laughs> Yikes! So rip to Prince Jing. Liu 
is very much in love with his boyfriend and like always thinks about like the original novel prince jing and how alone he was in the original plotline just never wants that to happen to him so he's like just fully committed to just being with him and making him happy and it's so sweet Aww. and one time as they are together as humans he discovers that prince jing's slaves are full of notes some of them new some of them old and worn but they're all things that he's wanted to say to Liu, but just never did. Oh! And he's just been carrying them around this whole time. It's just... That's really they're sweet. They're so sweet. I wonder if I could find that scene. Prince Jing rarely prepared notes ahead of time to communicate with other people. He usually wrote things down at the time. After he started dating Li Yu, though, he began to cherish every moment they had together, so he'd come up with this method as a compromise to avoid wasting precious time on writing. If he had something to say, it made sense to write it down when he was alone, to then give to Xiao Yu later. And so, the very oldest note that he had, like, just said, I like you. Oh, Oh my gosh, that's so cute. It was really cute, it was just like... Your Highness wrote this a long time ago, right? Otherwise, why would the note be in such a state? And he hid it specifically so he could take it out to make Li Yu happy. He cared for him so meticulously, it was a little scary. <laughs> That's so cute, though. You, I like I like it when someone cares so much, it's a little scary. Like Hua Chung. Yeah, exactly. It's so cute. And so there's just so many notes in his sleeves. And so he, like, Prince Jing is like a little hesitant and shy about it. But he, he pulls a bunch of notes from his sleeve and is like, oh my god, there's so many of them. And he just, like, Prince Jing just looking at him with just a tender gaze. Just like, yeah, I love you so much. That's really cute. So, like, another one that he grabs and, and reads at random was, The food tastes very good. Try not to tire yourself out. Aww. It's very sweet. And, and so he just spends time reading all of the notes and, like, the little things that happen between them all captured he in writing. He prepped the one about food before he ate the food. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, please stop making food. I love you so much. And so the last note is even more tattered. It's almost worn out, so it's very old. And Prince Jing tries to not let him read it, but he does. And this one says, I want to absorb essence. Oh my god. He's been down bad for his fish for a long time. Oh my god. Give that boy the essence. He's been craving it. He, he earned it. Now, again, it's funny because Liu hasn't connected this to him being a fish at all but he does know that for some reason prince jing keeps reading like cultivation manuals because he's trying to study to help figure out how to help his fish but he thinks that for some reason he's just interested in this sure so Li Yu teases him by bringing out the cultivation novels and is like oh like what's essence what's absorbing essence and like plays dumb and like tries to get him to explain it's like teasing him he's provoking him with this yeah and like trying to turn him on and get him to do something and like prince jing is like steadfastly resisting due to like the set conditions right he's like even like points up at the wall like you said and this and lee is like there's other things we can do without going all the way oh my god Liu is coming on to him he is initiating oh my god so how is he turning him on what does he do well he's just like like basically bringing out these erotic novels and like asking questions playing dumb and it's just like oh my god God. show me what do you mean what is it tell me it happens they fool around what do they do stuff it doesn't it doesn't actually say it doesn't actually say okay but some essence is flowing. Es- the essence be flowing. So um, definitely, and this is like towards the end of the, the volume. And by the end of the volume, it does state pretty clearly that they've pretty much done everything you can do without going all the way. Oh so like God. essentially... Fishy blowjob. Yeah. So all that all that stuff. All that stuff that you would imagine is probably happening. Wow. More, you know, over the course of their dating. Because the book does fade to black. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. There's nothing... There's nothing too spicy happening. It's just letting you know that they are fooling around, for sure. I love that for them. Yeah, it's great. Um, And that completes the be inseparable with the tyrant mission. Aww. (laughs) Which Liu thought was just like, we go to work together, we spend all day together, how are we not inseparable? No, you gotta come together. (laughs) Yeah. Come together. 
Yeah. yeah. When the essence begins flowing, I wonder if Prince Jing thinks something like magical is going to happen, <laughs> like a little bit. I mean, I I think he is assuming like it's like spiritual energy, basically, that like, he needs he to get cultivate. stronger now. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's funny because technically, like, this should be stealing Prince Jing's life force or whatever. Yeah. He just doesn't care about that part, I guess. Oh, my God. Um, oh, my God. But he, I think he's helping his, his carp spirit grow big and strong. And he, I think, um, he knows that Li Yu can only transform for two hours a day. So I'm imagining that he thinks that this will help him be able to transform for longer. He's not wrong because completing the system <laughs> missions will help him do that. Yeah. Completing that mission together uh, means that Li Yu can unlock another secret from Prince Jing. Mm. And so he does. And this one doesn't seem to involve Prince Jing directly, but it shows essentially a woman in her 30s being ordered to commit suicide. So that's a little bit dark. Is it his mom? It is his mom. Mm. Yes. Which we find out a little bit later through contextual clues. Um, so Liu pieces that together a little later on. But, you know, his mom, who the emperor did truly love and was the only one he made empress, was supposedly just passed away naturally. But it was an order. But she was forced to commit suicide. Damn. And so who and why are, is very much a mystery. And I'm sure Li Yu will be involved in solving that for sure. Damn. Yes. So the final mission that appears in this volume is be with the tyrant through thick and thin. So Sounds like something bad's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, some bad stuff might be on the way. But for now, we have more important things at hand, such as the emperor's birthday party. What could an emperor want for his birthday? And you'll never guess how this gets incorporated. So for starters, they attend Prince Jing's cousin's wedding together. Which is really cool, actually. It's like, oh my gosh, like as a human. Let's hope the wedding's only two hours. Right? Uh, yeah. They do this <laughs> thing which allows um, Liu to be with him a lot of times by they bring the fish bottle with them and Liu will hold on to it and inside the bottle is his new updated fish plushie. Prince Jing doesn't know. Yeah. He's yeah. like, oh my god. Of course, obviously Prince Jing knows that the f plushie is in there. He's so obsessed with this fish. You think he that could fool him? Yeah. But that's how that's working. And Prince Jing is always enabling like him to conveniently have time alone to transform back into a fish. And yeah, stuff. yeah, so yeah. It works. So they attend the wedding together with um, Prince Jing's cousin and the princess, and Liu gets to meet Prince Jing's family on his mother's side. Hmm. And um, namely his grandparents, his grandpa and grandma, and they love Liu and they support the relationship unconditionally. Aww. They just, they think that he's a delightful, polite young man and they know that Prince Jing is well past the age of having some sort of concubine or wife, and so they're just happy to see him with somebody he clearly likes. That's cute. Especially because because he's mute, he's kind of been shelved as someone who is eligible for the throne, and so the responsibility of bearing heirs is not really on him yeah. as well. So it's kind of like he's free to you know marry for love or whoever. Yeah. And but his family is just genuinely they love him so much. That's nice. So. Yeah, I thought that was sweet because I was, honestly, you never know with historical novels like like where the being gay is gonna fall. But in this one, it's just like male concubines, female concubines, doesn't really matter. That's nice. Yeah. So yeah, that was cool. Plot stuff that Li Yu doesn't know is going on. Prince Jing kind of basically gives the nod to his grandfather and his grandfather is like, okay, I get it. I will support you. And Li Yu's like, what's that about? And it's actually Prince Jing saying to his grandfather, I'm ready to pursue the throne seriously. Oh. Yes. Uh, Prince Jing has come to the conclusion that with the amount of times his brothers have tried to interfere with him and to harm his fish, that he needs ultimate power in order to be able to protect those close to him. Mm -hmm. So while he previously had no ambitions for the throne, now he has a really good reason to w want to have that kind of power. Nice. And his grandfather supports him and is ready to help him with that. That's cool. During this time, Liu does discover the identity of the woman in his vision being Prince Jing's mother. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that Prince Jing has decided to aim for the throne. Liu tries to convince him that the sixth prince, who's 
pretty much the only main threat left, should not be emperor at all costs. He's too dangerous to Prince Jing that he'll try to get rid of him. And even though there's no way he should have this information, he's like, just please trust me. Like the, the sixth prince is going to hurt you. You shouldn't let him become emperor by any means, which is essentially saying you should become the emperor. Yeah. And because he feels like his words aren't <laughs> enough, <laughs> Li Yu just has it in his head. He's like, I have to convince him somehow. I'll use my body. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I love this. It's like completely unprompted because like Prince Jing is already like two steps ahead. He's on the same page. He's already decided. The yeah. plan's already in motion, but he's like, sees what Li Yu's doing. He's like, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so he lets Li Yu convince him with his body. And then afterwards is like, and Li Yu's like, yes, I did it. <laughs> How did he convince him with his body? What did he do? It's another fade to black moment, but it's like implied that they... It's like, you're going to listen to me. It's like, like, please, pretty please. Oh my God. Okay, and okay. just, they bang it out, you know, <laughs> doing everything, but all the way. Okay. Sort of thing. So um, this is like truly like a reoccurring bit between them where he feels like he has to convince Prince Jing one way or another through affection you know, kind of in a, like, in a oh, wife. Persuade yeah, me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he's always already like said yes to it, essentially. Now, the Emperor's B Day party. Part of pursuing the throne is being in the Emperor's good graces. And part of being in the Emperor's good graces is making a good impression at his birthday party by giving him a wonderful gift. Mm -hmm. And Li Yu knows that the sixth prince, who has no money, he doesn't come from a good family, he's his mother is like, was like a servant in the palace that the emperor accidentally knocked up. Yeah. That he's planning on creating a light show with lanterns to spell out the word longevity for the emperor for his birthday. And so Liu's like, we have to one-up him for his birthday. And Prince Jing already has something planned for his birthday, but it's like... And so Liu is like, I, since I'm a fish whisperer, you know this because I take care of your fish... <laughs> I think I can train the fish. I can train the fish to do something really cool for his birthday. Because he, um, in a prior scene, as a fish, he interacted with some other koi fish and could communicate with them, oh which was a really god. cute, funny scene. Oh my god. And they would listen to him. So and he's going to get all these koi to dance. Yes. And so... What Liu does for the Emperor's birthday party. I would be like, witch! Witch! <laughs> like, oh my god, that would be horrifying. You're right. And so Liu... But no, it's auspicious and magical, yes. Exactly. So Liu, like, does this sort of, like, f like f arranges the fish, like, commands them to this sort of synchronized little thing to spell out the word longevity. Wow. Which, which is way cooler than which is way cooler. lanterns. It's like, fuck your lanterns. This is way cooler. Oh my god. Uh, Prince Jing also gave the emperor, like, a nice painting and calligraphy and stuff. So it's like, we're good. <laughs> Li Yu's like, you were gonna win him over with a painting? <laughs> yes. <laughs> From his favorite painter. Obviously, the fish flash mob is a way better idea. <laughs> It's so funny because Prince Jing has kind of it taken care of, but he also is just like letting letting him do his thing. Yeah. And Liu, to his credit, even though he's not the smartest person or the smartest fish, is like, something could go wrong, so I'll have a backup plan. And so sure enough, the, the princes there are like, oh, what a nice birthday gift. I would love to feed the fish to help. And so he th throws fish food in and the normal fish all scatter to eat the fish food. And the emperor is like a little bit disappointed because he's like, obviously, this is probably how they got them to arrange. Oh, just them. through yeah. feeding them. Yeah. Right. But Liu is there also as a fish, a beautiful golden koi. And he swims up to the surface and like with a wink. With, <laughs> yes, basically. And like to the emperor, undistracted by the fish food and like with a with a beautiful lotus flower oh yes and saves so the day truly and so the emperor's like oh my god this magical auspicious fish is not though so. yeah yeah it was there it was really better. was fish magic yes, after all truly yes <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's so funny yes. and the emperor does definitely get the message like this is interesting because Prince Jing always gave me the same gift every year, and now he's done something very extravagant. Yeah, he's actually given a shit now. Yeah, oh, okay. showing me that he is interested. Yeah, in my position, mm. which I can respect. 
So he's he's very pleased with his birthday gift. Okay. Also, uh, Prince Jing, even though they're boyfriends now, still has a little bit of a jealous side. And there's one scene where uh, to show his jealousy, he like aggressively comes on to Liu and kisses him. Ooh. And Liu doesn't really mind it. <laughs> oh god, I gotta say. He's like, that was kinda hot. It's kinda hot. Wow. Oh, kinda hot that it's my boyfriend. <laughs> oh no. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Am I pregnant? Am I pregnant? Am I pregnant? Am there I is, pregnant? <laughs> is there a possibility that I'm perdrant? <laughs> Tell me. Just kidding. Or <laughs> it's not what you think. It's not what you think. What happened? <laughs> First you have to understand the socio-political context before you can get to the fish preg. Yes. So, the emperor, for all intents and purposes, seems very pleased with Prince Jing's initiative and should have rewarded him, but instead suddenly orders Prince Jing to go to the western border. The western border is a shithole. It's a chaotic place full of disasters and war, and being sent there is basically a demotion. Hmm. But he doesn't take away Prince Jing's title, which he would have done if he was punishing him for some reason. So, being sent to the western border instead of being a punishment or devotion is actually a test. Okay. The emperor is saying, you want to prove yourself to me. Go to this very challenging place and make order of it. Okay. If you can actually do something positive at the western border, especially being mute, you will be like significantly competent and i'll know that you're serious about wanting the throne yeah so this is good because even though prince jing has always been kind of disqualified from trying um, the emperor out of love definitely doesn't want him to push himself yeah now he's being given a proper chance so that's good that have to do with the pregnancy <laughs> yes so <laughs> liu begs to go with him and prince jing surprisingly says no. Mm. He doesn't want Liu to go with him to the western border because it is going to be very dangerous both on the way there. This is man's work. Yes, not fish work. <laughs> and it'll be dangerous there as well. And so of course he doesn't want his beloved boyfriend to be in any harm's way whatsoever. Yeah. So Liu begs and begs and begs, says, please, please, please. And Prince Jing still says no. And then Liu says, how could you do this to me when I'm carrying your baby? And Prince Jing is like, what? Because he's thinking, I don't know how carp spirits work. Can, can fish get pregnant through the mouth? Can fish get pregnant? Yeah, like, like how, is that, is that how it works? Like, oh. can you get pregnant that way? Oh my God. He's thinking, oh my God. And then he's thinking like, will it be like a, a human baby or will it be a fish baby? I, I feel like a human baby would be a little bit easier in this case, but no matter what, I will love my children no matter what. Like, he's already Stop. thinking through oh all of this. Oh my god. He's like, I would love my carp son. And then, yes. <laughs> and then Liu like, sees his face and he's like, I was kidding. That was a, jo that was a joke. I was, just, I was just throwing a fit because I wanted to go with you. But so, at any rate, after that pregnancy scare, Prince Jing does relent and does allow him to go with him. You might oh, be wow. wondering how that works when he only can transform as a human for two hours. He puts Liu in a carriage by himself with the fish so that oh, wow. he can okay. travel and transform and, and transform travel. whenever he... I can't believe you baited me with the pregnancy thing! I know. Well, here's the thing, though. It's now like a running gag with oh, Prince Jing. Until um, because it's not a joke anymore. Because Liu is like, like well, how come I'm in, I'm in the carriage all by himself? And I think it's Liu's servant who translates for him. He's like, oh, it's because you're pregnant, young master. Ah, <laughs> oh, my God. And so I don't think Prince Jing is going to let that go. I think he's going to be thinking way too deeply about that. I think he's going to definitely have, a, like, a put a baby in you kink for sure. Fair enough. Yep. That's like, so funny. I know. Gongzu sit properly. He tried not to laugh. His highness was afraid it'd be too cramped for you since you're pregnant now. That carriage is for you alone. Please get some rest and take care of Master Fish. Oh my gosh. Wow. The last line in the book is, the only way for Li Gong's not to be discovered was to pretend to be pregnant. So it's like, he's like, ah, man, I have to like follow this bit. So it's like, <laughs> as a man, as a, <laughs> so I don't know if it's going to be like an ongoing thing. But yeah. It's really funny. That is funny. Wow. Do you know how many other novels there are? I don't know. Okay. Well, if you guys would like to purchase this novel or the first one or pre-order the next one, I'll have all the links below. 
Thank you so much for another incredible book review. I think this is one of my favorites to hear about. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just so glad that they're boyfriends. I know, it's That's so really sweet. sweet. And I'm so excited for the next volume because like, I feel like there will be more peril and danger mm -hmm. at the western border. And yeah, they're sick like that. I know. <laughs> I know. Who knows what will happen? Fishy angst. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.